$10,000 in trading payouts a month is life-changing money for most people. It usually means you can quit your nine to five job and sustain your lifestyle just off your trading, giving you the freedom to set the schedule you want, to travel, and to focus your time and energy on other businesses and projects. But most traders never get there. I had a client that came to me mid last year who was incredibly frustrated that he wasn't getting results. He made a little bit of money and then gave it all back to the market. I asked him a very simple question. I asked him, why are you trading? What's the purpose of your trading? And he couldn't give me a good or a clear answer. So what we did over the next hour is we constructed a deep reason why behind his trading. We gave him a good reason to become a successful trader. And in summary, a big part of that was giving him the independence so that he could go off and focus on what he truly loved to do. Trading was a means to an end to get out of a job he didn't want so he could go and pursue his health and fitness goals. And long story short, this trader John quit his nine to five job earlier this year because he was able to scale up to $10,000 a month in payouts. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I showed this trader. A step-by-step -step guide through the math of scaling to $10,000 thousand dollars in trading payouts now if you have any current trading psychology challenges just comment them below and I'll offer you my help. Now, most traders never sit down and map out a clear path to getting them to the type of money they wanna make as a trader. And as a result, most traders don't know where they are, they don't know where they're going, and they certainly don't have a strategy to get there. One of the wisest things you can do no matter where you're at in your trading journey is sit down and do a little bit of math and figure out, all right, what are my current results? What are my average monthly percentage? And obviously your percentage changes every month but if you're gonna have a look over a 12 month sample space, on average, what are you returning? So take your last 12 months return, divide it by 12, that's your average. And then have a look, all right, what account size am I trading? And write that down. And then what you do is you do a little bit of a mathematical formula where you turn this percentage into a, into a number, 0 0.03, and you multiply that by your account size and all of a sudden you have an average monthly profit. So for example, if your current average monthly returns are 3% on $100,000 in funding, and let's say you're um, getting 90% profit split of that funding, that's something you have to factor in as well, you're getting a little bit less than $3,000 per month with that 90% profit split. So that's your take home profit, okay? And now if you need to make $10,000 a month because after taxes, after you put a little bit into savings, that's what's gonna meet your expenses so you can move on from your nine to five job, then what you wanna do is, all right, you set the target at $10,000 per month, and then you figure out what's my average monthly percentage. And let's say, for example, your average monthly percentage is 5%. Then what you do is you do this little formula here, where you have $10,000 divided by your average monthly percentage, and then you figure out what account size is required. So if your average monthly returns are 5% and you wanna be making $10,000 per month from your trading, what you do is you take 10,000, divide it by 0 0.05, which is just the percentage in number, and then you get your account size required, which is $200,000 account size. So I want each of you to do this. I want you to figure out, all right, what's your current average monthly return? And let's say, for example, it's this year, 3%. And then, Let's say your current account size is 100,000. Let's say for example, your average monthly return is that and you wanna to get to this, then you sit down and you, are, and you do this math here, $10,000 divided by 0 0.03, and then you figure out your account size required with your average monthly return to make $10,000 per month is $333,000. That's the account size you need to scale up to. And um, to be fair, that type of access to capital is not that difficult to get access to nowadays. There are so many options for that. But what I want you to start by doing, and you can even pause the video and do it right now, is get an idea of your math. Figure out your average monthly returns, have a look at your account size, and then figure out how much you're making in profit. And then figure out what's the target. How much do you need to make per month from your trading? How much do you want to make from your trading per month? And then with your average monthly percentage, what account size do you need using this formula? Okay, that's what I want you to do right now. Now, then we have to figure out, all right, what's the gap? What's your target return? For example, your target return is 5% and your current return is 3%. So you take your target and subtract the current and that's what you need. You need to increase your monthly results by 2% or your current account size is 100,000 and 
my target account size is 200,000. So 200,000 minus 100K equals 100K plus 100K. So I need to increase my monthly returns by 2%. I need to increase my account size by 100,000. Okay, so how do we actually go about doing that? Well, then what you want to focus on is, all right, how can I increase my monthly percentage? If you want to start to make more and more money from your trading, now that you know your math, now you can start to optimize. The first thing you want to optimize is increasing your average monthly percentage. That's number one. Number two is increasing your account size, number two. So in order to increase your monthly percentage return, the first thing you can do is focusing on increasing your strike rate. And the way you increase your strike rate is by increasing the amount of wins you take or break evens you take over the amount of losses you take. So what I want you to do is have a look through your previous results and figure out what were the 20% of setups that you took that got you 80% of your results? Which of the setups you're taking are bringing you most your wins? And then figure out what are the common factors between those wins and those particular setups? Maybe for example, for me, because what I do when I trade is I look at a daily higher time frame area of value, and then I look for confirmation in the lower time frame. And when I did this exercise, what I found is that those setups that increase my strike rate and have the highest strike rate are those that come from a closer to the edge of structure and are at the start of the reversals, but have confirmation. The moment I started to take trades further into the, the trending move, especially on currencies, which are, tend to be slightly more range bound, what I found was my strike rate reduced. So when I did that analysis, I could figure out an actionable thing. I could make a refinement to my trading plan, the type of setups I took to increase my strike rate. So that, that was number one. So I increased my strike rate by taking more wins, more break evens and less losses. The next thing you want to do in order to increase your monthly percentage is increase your average win size. And the way you do that is by letting your winners run. So I want you to go now analyze your most, you know, your biggest winners and all your winners and figure out, are there any adjustments you can take to your top take profit levels? Are there any adjustments you can, you can make to your, the way you manage positions? For example, what I found was that I used to set take profits. I used to set one to one take profits, but I found a lot of positions, especially those at edges of structures started to run further. So what I decided to do was I decided to become more active in my management and trail my stop above highs if I was going short and below lows if I was going long. And that increased my average win size because I allowed winners that were going to run to run. Or you may have a look and your trading strategy, the way you trade may need something completely different. You may be actively managing your positions, but you're expecting too much from the market. You're being too loose with your active management. So you need to stay, start taking take profits. Or depending on the market condition, you set take profits versus actively manage. So you want to do this analysis to figure out what's wise for you to do depending on the market condition. So you can increase your average win size. And then you want to have a look at how can I decrease my average loss size. So for example, something I personally did was I introduced what I found was that the setups that did very, very well, what they tended to do is they tend to move straight away. So if I had price playing around in my break even area, I would trail my stop to negative 0.5. And I found more times than not, when price pushed past negative 0.5 in drawdown, I was going to take a 1% loss anyway. So I halved my average loss size on certain positions. And then in certain positions, I would also try to break even. So I would reduce the amount of losses I would take, I would also reduce my average loss size because of the negative 0.5 rule. And this was all based on data, this wasn't based on emotion or how I felt on that individual trade. But I had data, I analyzed my data, and I made refinements based on what the market was showing me statistically made sense. And when you do this, guess what you do, you increase your monthly percentage. So that when you have a look at the, you know, the bottom line, the amount of money you make at the end of the month, that's actually going up because you're increasing your monthly percentage. You're also reducing the amount of stress and emotional volatility you're putting yourself through because you're taking less losses. You have a higher strike rate and that's in a very, and, and you're cutting losses quickly. That's what the best traders do. They focus on letting their winners run and creating a process that allows that. And 
they focus on cutting losses quickly. Okay, so do that analysis. Then the next thing you wanna consider is how can I increase my account size? And one of the best ways you can do that is at least initially as a trader is through prop firms and scaling with funding. So, so you may have one prop firm account and you may pass that and the next thing is you wanna focus on picking up another prop firm account. That's relatively, that's relatively easy. Um, I don't need to go into too much detail on that, but if you're a trader, you're not taking advantage of prop firms, I'd encourage you to, especially early on in your trading journey, take advantage of prop firms, get payouts, utilize those payouts to, so you can have freedom from a nine to five job, but also use those payouts to start building your cash reserves, use them to start building your personal accounts, you may as well take advantage of the prop firms. There's some great structures out there. So that's number one, my number one suggestion on increasing your account size, but don't become reliant on them. Don't become dependent on them. Don't set expectations that they're going to be around for forever because they probably won't. Um, it's really wise just to take advantage of the opportunity you have now. And then the other thing you can do is if you find yourself having a very high strike rate setup, which I know I did, there's a bread and butter setup that I look for, especially on uh, indices, where it's an edge of structure and there are certain components that align on the intraday. And I know based on data, based on previous experience, that if that setup sets up, I have a very high strike rate. So what I recently, and I mean probably the last year or so, decided to do was increase my risk on those. On those particular setups, instead of risking 1%, I risk 2% on those setups because I know the strike rate is so high. And because I also know that I have processes in place to cut losses quickly and let my winners run. I'm happy to do that. But obviously do not increase your risk on positions that aren't favorable for you. So traders, if you go through your data and you make data-driven decisions based on these factors, you're gonna increase your monthly percentage, you're gonna increase your account size, and you're gonna increase the amount of income you make as a trader, allowing you to potentially trade full-time, or at least work part-time and trade part-time, or at least have an additional source of income from your trading so you can build cash reserves, you can build um, your personal trading accounts. These are all wise things to do. And who doesn't wanna make more money trading? So that's how you close the gap. That's how you increase your monthly percentage and your account size. That may take some time going through your data, making data-driven decisions, but at least I've guided you in the, in, in the right places to look. Then the final consideration here, because if you have great processes, but you don't stick to them, there's no point in having great processes in the first place. So this is where your mindset's very important. Firstly, in order to stick to your trading plan and then to handle the increase in, in loss size and win size, when you start to optimize and when you start to scale up, it's not all fairy tale, it's not all positive, you're gonna have greater levels of accountability. You're gonna take bigger losses, which can have bigger effect on your psychology. You're gonna take bigger wins, which guess what? Are also gonna have a bigger effect on your psychology. I know many traders who got everything they wanted, they started making 10, 20, $30,000 a month from trading and they couldn't handle the increase in income. They couldn't handle what that did to them psychologically. And they ended turning paths to a debaucherous lifestyle and they blew everything. And the truth is there are new challenges when you start to make more and more money from your trading. So it's very important that you learn to manage your psychology, learn to manage what's going on in your head and you have your head screwed on properly in order to be able to not only handle the losses, you know what, it's actually easier to handle losses than it is to handle those big wins. Those big wins can really get to your head. And then finally, the last reason you wanna master your psychology is to sustain the consistency. Because if you're relying on your trading, you need to make sure you have your head screwed on and you have your life structured and organized well so that you can come to the market consistently and execute and as a result, have consistent profitability. Because if you're coming to the market feeling different and you've got all these issues in your life that are impacting your execution, there's no way you're gonna be able to consistently pull money out the market. So, so firstly, I don't ever suggest traders jump full-time trading just like that. Always have cash reserves, always test it out first, always try and go from full-time work to part-time work so you can test the waters. And then um, if you do get to the point of becoming a full-time trader because you're pulling consistent returns and you're making profit from the market, make sure you have cash reserves and then make sure you dedicate yourself to doing something like another business or pursuing hobbies that you really like. It's really important. It's important for the soul. Okay, now in order to master your mindset and make 10K a month uh, a reality, make sure you check out my free Bulletproof Your Mindset tool 2.0. That's a game changer, link in the description. That tool is gonna help you do all these things and it's gonna assist you in that 
scaling process to $10,000 a month in consistent payouts. Traders, if you enjoy this video, make sure you like and subscribe. It tells YouTube it's valuable content and pushes it out to a wider audience.